So after the unexpected attention and overwhelming messages of support that I've seen on social media following the release of that video of me that's gone viral, where I'm talking about the impact that the discriminatory and abusive so-called anti-racist policies being implemented throughout our education system have on the health, welfare and lives of white children at the BME Ed Takeover event last Thursday, I've wanted to offer a quick response. So firstly, thank you to everybody who shared that video and offered supportive comments as these very important issues often go uh, ignored, brushed under the carpet or aggressively silenced by left-wing mobs. And it's clear that so many of us are deeply concerned about what is taking place throughout our education system. So it's been really uplifting to see so many of you finally find your voice, but it is so critical that you don't get bullied into silence once more because these white kids can't stand up for themselves. They depend on us to do it for them. And the facts do speak for themselves. There are numerous reports that I can refer to. Firstly, I'm going to bring up the one that I spoke about in the video that went viral, the Forgotten Report published by the Parliamentary Educational Committee earlier on this year. I'm just gonna bring this up for you. So in this report, which you can find online, that was published by the Parliamentary Educational Committee after an inquiry into the disparity in educational outcomes, depending on socioeconomic and ethnic background, they have found that out of all ethnic groups, the white indigenous population have been underperforming from early years right up to higher education. White children from disadvantaged backgrounds at five years old, only 53% meet the expected standard of development for that age. They have the lowest educational attainment rates in school, where only 17% of white British pupils eligible for free school meals achieve a strong pass in either English or maths, with their foreign origin peers more than twice as likely to do so, regardless of socioeconomic circumstances. And white children overall are statistically the least likely to go on into higher education, with just 13% of boys going on into higher education from white disadvantaged backgrounds. This is a shocking disparity where you also consider that they are one of the largest population demographics but have the lowest higher educational attendance and attainment rates. White boys are the only group to see a fall in places at university, with their numbers dropping by 10% in just seven years. And these shocking disparities in the educational outcomes for the white working class in comparison to their black and ethnic minority or socio-economically more advantaged peers has been recognised for quite some time. And the data is readily available on .gov UK websites. It's available in the Forgotten Report that we just spoke about, in the Office for Students, in the National Office for Statistics, in um, the Parliamentary Educational Committee's inquiry into pupils from disadvantaged backgrounds, in Ofsted reports, UCAS data, um, the Department for Education, the Office for Students, House of Commons Library and the National Educational Opportunities Network, NEON. They've done a fantastic report called White Working Class Heroes. I'll try and post the link underneath, but if not, I might do a separate video about it because I thought that that was a fantastic document. But what I wanted to speak about is what exactly is causing this comparative lack of achievement? What is causing these um, massive disparities that we're seeing? What exactly is happening within our schools, our colleges and our universities? Because according to long term and extensive studies on race, ethnicity and average IQs, such as the Witches, Dolan, Carlson and Van der Maas study that consolidate over 30 years of data onto race and average IQs, we should see white boys doing quite well academically. So what exactly has caused this rapid decline in attainment, engagement and participation for this disadvantaged group, the white working class of Great Britain? For far too long, nobody has wanted to address the real reasons behind why this massive disparity in educational achievement has been taking place. I've seen people call it a phenomenon, but the reality is that white working class children have suffered decades of neglect, marginalisation and discrimination, which has affected their long term aspirations and quality of life that has then impacted their children's aspirations, creating cycles of disadvantage and low attainment within white working class 
communities. And these socioeconomically disadvantaged children are excluded from initiatives that are meant to increase participation and attainment in disadvantaged groups based on their white racial characteristics. There are initiatives that are endless that are open to black and ethnic minorities that will actively exclude disadvantaged white students. And then there is the disengagement from the curriculum that increasingly inaccurately disseminates our history in an effort to stir up racial animosity and install a sense of guilt and shame around their white racial heritage and characteristics, which has caused a massive disengagement from the curriculum. And then there is the fact that these disadvantaged white children have a lack of social capital. There is no community interest companies, no social enterprises, no charitable organisations that seem to be looking out for their best interests. But there are countless for their black and ethnic minority peers. And there has been an ongoing failure to address these issues within education because these children are white. We see endless initiatives that offer opportunities exclusively for non-white ethnic groups who are already well provided for. These initiatives actively exclude white disadvantaged students from applying. We see initiatives to increase their participation in higher education, even when these ethnic groups are already overrepresented in education in proportion relative to their population size. Yet when initiatives such as scholarships are proposed to increase participation of disadvantaged white children, who are highly underrepresented in higher education in relation to their population size in our society, these are refused. So, what can we do about it? Well, firstly, we need to start speaking up on behalf of white pupils and white students. If you're a parent of a white child in school, speak to your fellow white parents about these issues. If you're a student in college or university, speak to your fellow white peers about the discrimination and anti-white agendas that you see taking place. Write letters of concern to head teachers, school governors, university directors, professors, your kids' teachers. Write to your local MPs and councillors and remind them of their duty underneath the Equality Act of 2010. Challenge harmful narratives being taught in schools such as white privilege and critical race theory. Ensure that you always put in complaints if there are discriminatory practices, policies and provisions that put already disadvantaged white students at further disadvantage when it comes to educational opportunity. And if you can't resolve these matters internally with these educational institutions, then I would suggest taking action underneath the Equality Act of 2010. Because what they're doing cannot be justified as positive action, as it's not proportionate to achieve a legitimate aim. And it's... It, I'll speak about how to take action underneath the Equality Act of 2010 in a separate video, because this has gone on for so long. But I would like to thank everybody who did share that viral video. And the next video, I will discuss the effects of psychological abuse throughout our education system on white children. Thank you very much for your time.